Hello everybody, welcome to the play-in's final phase. We've got Plotinus with his dwarf team in blue. He's 2-0 uh, in this tournament, so he is at the horrible stage where he could lose a game and go out. Uh, very unlucky with the, all the people that happens to. Uh, talk, talk, talk. As on his second chance, he's got All World Alliance in the red. Um, so let's have a look at the teams. I don't mind this team from Pl from Plotinus. What he's done is he's gone... Well, I don't, I don't really like it though either. He's only got one runner, has he? No, he's got the he's got the two runners, but he swapped a re-roll for a troll slayer. Like I don't hate it, but I quite liked not having, you know, giving up the slayer for a four three roll. Four re rolls is you know is really nice. Uh, skills pretty standard with a mighty blow guy and some guard guys. I think maybe with two runners he he could have gone for an extra guard. Um, and, you know, there's still an argument for having a Mighty Blow Tackler rather than a Mighty Blow Slayer. But, you know, pe generally people who take Slayers like to go Mighty Blow on it. Um, talk, talk, talk. Oh, we've got a great package. Woo hey And we've got four guard here. A block catcher, which I don't like too much. A tackle blitzer, which is understandable, even though I don't like it. A Mighty Blow Troll Slayer, which I don't like too much. <laughs> Um, a block thrower, which I'm not that big a fan of. And a dirty player halfling as a way to spend his double, which I'm not really a big fan of. Um, the roster is kind of the roster that I would have made, right, with the three re-rolls and the bench of two. The problem is, like, you know, two of your, both of your bench, in this case, he's starting with a fling because he's got a double skill on it. Like, your, your bench being halflings is a bit weak, right? That's the problem with the team. But... My plan was for six guard and a sneaky get dirty player um, catcher, but the problem is, like I just thought about it and I thought I don't know how I win. Like you know, the team just seems a bit rubbish, and uh, you know they've proven to be a bit rubbish, right? They're all World Alliance. They're not the best team in the game. They're arguably not even a good team, and even with uh, even with this kind of package it's they're still like how do they win what do they do as, as good as all the guard and the strength and a bit of block and how good the sneaky get dirty player high roll could be if he'd taken it I mean he could just high roll with a dirty player alone couldn't he but I don't know I just wasn't really feeling wasn't really feeling the old world alliance for how far it again Glorious bit of streaming lately, must say. I've been pretty pretty consistent and then a a mega day of streaming today. Like eight hours nearly of streaming today, flip me. Out of time here. That's the power. Putting this extra guys in, I'm not sure about, right? Because it just, it's just giving away hits. And like you're pressuring with dwarves, <laughs> which, you know, aren't the most pressurizing team. It's funny because his plan was to do this, wasn't it? Which was to uh, frenzy trap himself or start with a 3D, a blockless 3D, a blockless loner 3D, was his entire plan.
which isn't ideal, just quietly. So surely we're going to see some safe moves first. Like everyone blocks here, right? Everyone blocks here. And then, um, and then maybe that one of them can blitz. Or they can all block along diagonal. Do the three D. Not not protecting the ball at all there first before making the blockless loner three D. Kind of hate this follow because now, I guess he's going to blitz with the the slayer, but he could. He could end up here and in contact, couldn't he? Now he does this block. See, Art losing his shit, you know. You know that Art's going to be losing his shit here because guess what? You can move this guy beforehand. You can also move him one up so that he doesn't bubble box it out. So so this, this guy should be one up. And these two should have both moved before a blockless loner block. And it's kind of wild, isn't it? It's kind of wild that here we are in the playoffs for five grand and these are the mistakes people are making. They really shouldn't be making that mistake. Like this guy, okay, he might be fouling, right? This guy might be fouling. Oh, makes the pickup. But, um... So you can just push him away and not follow. And now he's there to do that assist. And will he foul or not? This is so weird, isn't it? It shows you the push there, but it doesn't always go there. Sometimes it shows you like a random push. He's not following, so he's not fouling. So if you were never going to foul, this guy should have moved here. <laughs> you know, seven actions ago or something. It's funny, isn't it? It's funny. Like, you know, and I made one of the mistakes, right? I didn't stand my players up in that crucial turn versus Galentio. Um, there is five grand on this. Yep, Pedro. Yep. Yep. Yeah, I fouled you again. It made, it made, it made us all talk about Warhammer the other day and <laughs> made a few of us want to play again. <laughs> It is funny though, isn't it, that like, that's the absolute very basics, like, it's different if like you're thinking about how you're going to break through and like, you know, the turn ordering, you want to see how a block works or anything, but this is an absolute basic turn where you had to, you know, do stuff like protect the ball, right, that, the, those three moves could have all happened first, should have all happened first, and I think it's objectively poor that they didn't, pushes him back for a follow up block. If he'd only got the push, but because he gets the power, he can go the other way. Leaves him on the on him, but he doesn't have tackle, does he? So he might might put the uh, tackler on there. This is a bit weird, isn't it? Trying to push for this because you're dwarves, <laughs> so so you know pushing the pushing the pressure is likely to leave you burned behind. Except he's got a tree which is immobile and a few dwarves himself I really, uh, this is a problem I just really don't know what all world lines are meant to do, how they're meant to play as good as load, loads of uh, as good as loads of guard is this is uh, terrible though isn't it, I've just realised from talk talk talk, I mean he does have the sorry from plotness, he does have the backup runner but he's literally just sacrificed his block runner to a mighty blow blitz onto a tree. Not what I would have done. Who can say if it's good or bad? Oh, he's turned the back. Well, he's blocked off the block into the tree. <laughs> 
We will not be... We will not be putting him on the tree. Well, wouldn't anyway, but... I don't know how you think... Like... If this is a push into another push, you're actually isolated. This move was so terrible. Again, no offense to, plot, to talk, talk, talk. But like, you push him to here, and let's say you get another push. Now you have to push him here, and you're stuck. You've used your blitz, you're stuck, and your movement eight is getting punched back. Like, why do you block off pushing him into the tree I just don't understand it's great to push him into the tree it's amazing to push him into the tree it seems really weird to like set up specifically to trap your slayer and not get the tree hit really weird One, two, three, four, five, six. I was going to GFI with him. He's going to put the ball in there. It's not great, is it? Chef's live eyes is going to run over here. Cheeky GFI. I mean, this isn't fantastic. This is. He's got to make this dodge now, hasn't he? And this also isn't a screen. It's. <laughs> it's not even a screen, is it? He can uh, he can hit the. Oh no, it is a screen. Yeah, it is a screen as long as this guy doesn't move. But I was going to move him up to three D three D with the tree, but he's just he's just not activating the tree, which is you know pretty nice, right? Not activating the tree. Can we surf here? Blocks to there, blocks to there, blocks to there, blocks him twice to there, surfs him. But uh, it's unlikely, because he'd have to get another player for an assist here. And then... Who's going to blitz him? Nobody, so... You know, this guy is, is technically surfable, though, right? 1D, 2D, 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 1D, and then a 2D surf from him. It is possible to surf this guy. I think it's a terrible idea, but it's possible. <laughs> Probably wants to try and pressure the halfling, eh? Getting a, getting a strength 3 tackler on the halfling is pretty nice. He got a strength 3 tackler on the catcher last turn. Getting tackle on the fling. These these are both pretty slow, aren't they? This could be a this could be a grueling match to commentate <laughs> and watch. <laughs> the good thing is it's uh, it started at five p.m. and the next game's at eight p.m. So you know this might just go straight on to the next game. That was a reroll, that wasn't it? He uh, dub sculled. <laughs> They're just showing a random dodge in between is so mad, isn't it? See, I quite like, I quite like either blitz, right? You could have blitzed either of these. Probably blitz him because he's got guard, but I guess he's on the right. What the fuck is a play in? Well, Furian, it's like a playoff, except it's not. It's a play in. <laughs> So the winners of these, basically it's a 56-man tournament that 14 people get through, and the 14 winners qualify for the playoffs, who will, and they will join Artemis and Chunter, who have already made the playoffs. A cheeky little skull there. So now he gets, again, now he gets to, uh, oh, so he's got to block this guy first, and then he gets to push him into the tree this time if he wants. Play him to play off, yeah. Yeah, so this, this blitzer can block this blitzer, right? 
And then he can block him into the tree finally. So yeah, I mean obviously you've di all you've done with basing that guy is dictate his blitz, but it's okay, right? At least you at least you're slowing him down a little bit. play into a playoff. Oh shit! Ike's fouling him I guess and maybe putting guard back there as well. Oh, he came out of nowhere! Oh my god, he doesn't fall. What, what, why does he hit? His tree. <laughs> I guess he could have pushed him on the second hit. Mighty blow hit on armor raid. Only a stun. Out of, out of 100% followed. And then, you know, pushed him onto the tree. Like, push him onto the tree, man. Use your tree. Use your tree. She's going to let him 1D the ball. Which honestly looks pretty good now with... Uh... Wait a minute, he can 2D the ball. If he doesn't break AV here, he can just 2D the ball. Okay. <laughs> okay. But pushing him on the tree is the tree's job, J5. That's exactly the point. The tree can just stand there, but push push the runner onto the tree. So he's got to dodge away from the tree. Sent off. Not a problem. Oh my god, actually not a problem. Argues the call. Outrageous. Outrageous argue the call. No, no, no. The, fo the follow-up block from the Slayer, right? Because he's got Frenzy. Slayer's got Frenzy, so he, he could have just dumped him on the... Oh, the, oh sorry, the, the follow-up block here was this guy, right? So you follow this hit and leave him on there, and then he blocks him, and now you're getting away from your tree and getting your tree on other people. Like, now, your tree isn't helping so much, right? It'd be better if these two were over here and the runner was there. I think it's just way better. I think it's literally way better if you've got two guard players here and the and the runner's there. And he's sandwiched and he's stuck on the tree. And okay, maybe he can bring loads of people and hit the tree. But if he does, then you just win because they've abandoned defense. Seems really weird to keep... Like he's purposefully kept the runner away from the tree. Which to me seems crazy because I definitely want the runner stuck on the tree. Because <laughs> then all he can do is dodge away, isn't it? And he's had some hot dice here, by the way. Talk, talk, talk. Two, two stuns there again and the Kaz. I mean, you definitely want more than two men's on the tree. 100%. Want all of the men's on the tree. I, or do you mean the dwarves don't want more than two on the tree? Yeah. The dwarves want one on the tree. Maybe the tree is afraid of the runner with his high move. Yeah. Yep. So what he could have done is, he, this guarder could have run all the way around. And then this guy could have gone 3, 4, I you know. I wonder where this guy knows. So he actually couldn't have got 2D on the ball. If he had been sent off though, if he had been sent off, um, he would have got 2D on the ball. <laughs> like super easily, right? Double GFI. Oh no, he was there as well. Okay, so it wasn't so easy. Okay, it wasn't so easy. I'll let him off. Very, very strong for talk, 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 talk now, isn't it? Talk, talk, talk. Right, 
let's pin the predictions. Ah, Ori Lensis went with talk, 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 talk. Chuntra and I both went with Plotinus. So, who knows? The fling has dirty player. He used a double. He used a double to give him that. I guess he just didn't want to use the double, right? <laughs> well, in Aryan. These are two teams that are both better than Blackhawks. <laughs> I did, yes. I it was what it deserved, J five, quite honestly. It was what Inarian's comment deserved. Imagine bigging up Blackhawks. They are terrible. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Big foul in it. Do you put that guy there? Probably not, right? One, two, three, four, five, GFI, GFI. You probably don't need him. Whack in another assist. Don't need him. Whack in another assist. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, well, he's realised he doesn't need him. He's like, wait a minute. But he can't assist with the uh, Troll Slayer as well. But he can get a big old... A big old foul. No, I'm sure he isn't in Aryan. We've all done things like that, haven't we? You move him and then realise... Oh, so now they argue the call first worked, then the coach was thrown out, so he can't argue the call again. He won the first time and then lost the second. A six, then a one. Exactly, J5, exactly. But, I mean, you'll take that, won't you? I mean, you'd have taken the send-off last time, so he's traded a... Halfling for a long beard, but then you know he still got the a long beard. Well, a runner reserve, so he still got player reserve. Injured. Okay. Well, now all of a sudden, badly hurt. Got to up all that instant. Instant up all there. A guard player knocked over. <laughs> yeah, I think in about two hours time, J5 is going to say that I've been streaming so long I can anticipate the chat, and that's, that's absolutely correct. A dwarf blood runner, what do you take then? Royke also in a couple of hours. I, I imagine he's going to say that. And the answer... Would be plus movement, plus movement, plus agility, plus strength. Yep. You're aiming for plus two movement, right? Um, plus two movement is really nice. But if you roll edge, you take edge because it's good. And if you roll strength, you take strength because it's good. And just have a big old, a big old monster runner. Tackle, I guess, later. Leader, if you want to save a bit of TV. Kick off return, if you really want. AV. Yeah, stats are... Stats are good for lots of players now, but... 
obviously especially for all carriers. Pretty well timed drive from uh, Talk Talk Talk, isn't it? This being turn five, great great time to push forward. Only leaving well, leaving three players behind. Now, if he gets the tree activation, he'll be able to follow on to the runner and block him onto the runner as well on a one D. So, or he could just dodge him off. I don't know, but I think you blitz this guy and run down the field, right? Yeah, I like not blitzing with the Slayer. Like, the Slayer could have got there, right? Three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But then the danger is he'd have to hit again. GFI, leave himself based. Problem is, you don't really get very far forward. I guess the ball is going to go. Hmm. It's not great, is it? It's not great, this. Yeah, yeah, the slate should have been the assist, yeah. Yeah, it's a very good point. Very good point, Maud ready. And then this guy would have been further up, yep. Yep, 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 very good point. Oh my god, he's rooted. He finally blocks him. And he roots. And, you know, through the entire half, he's refused... To stick the fucking runner onto the tree, and now the runner is free. Just go for the dodge off. Yeah, I know, absolutely correct, Madrid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So this is this is the problem that the dwarves have had because he tried to pursue early, he ended up in not a very good shape, did he? And it looks like he's not going to get the stop. Um, one D because the tree the tree rooted, so he would have one D probably if the tree had got there, but he couldn't get him on there. Right? He's here, tree's here tree rooted so if the tree had, I mean if the tree had followed then I think you probably do one D him so then you get three players on the tree but yeah the guard guy he doesn't get to push him twice oh this guy maybe he stood up maybe he stood up maybe he stood up I mean, it's not really very good to push him on the tree, is it? It's not very good to push him on the tree. You're pushing him nearer the ball. He still wants to dodge off whatever happens. I guess it gives you a vaguely more responsive player. I guess you could follow on him as well. So then you've got a 3D from the tree to try and get lucky in Kazim at the end of the turn. Yeah, maybe he probably should have done. Maybe he probably should have done. What a great sentence. I think it's fine not to, because you're just like, well, he's based. I want him to keep him based, right? Keep him rolling a 3+. plus. But yeah, if he had 1D'd him to get the 3D. But he can do that next turn now anyway, right? With less, less loss involved. Oh, yeah, he's just realized Talk 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 has got a blue thing. So, if we were to use the proper colors. The dwarves being cream and green is pretty good, isn't it, actually? That's pretty decent 
colours for the dwarves. The problem is it looks... Oh no, it, the, yeah, it looks really too similar to this. This looks too cream and green. It looks like it's on the wrong team. <laughs> Also, if you fail this, then the, this guy could get served at very low odds, isn't it? So you probably just 1D now for the 3D, or, or dodge him out. Dodge him out to make this a little bit stronger. <laughs> Thanks for that, J5. <laughs> oh, tries the 3 plus, gets KO'd. Nice. Might not have happened off the 1D because he could have re rolled the. Uh, he could have re rolled with Brawler. That does seem a little bit silly, doesn't it? That does seem a little bit silly. I mean, especially now after the, after the fact. But I guess he, you know, he's a bit worried that something can happen, right? Some dice from the dwarves. A uh, riot. So, yeah, it does seem a, with three, it seems a bit silly not to. Yeah, I agree. And as we all know, I I do not go to the J five school of reroll preservation. <laughs> but even I, I think, would have uh, would have rerolled that one. I maybe wouldn't have, right? I maybe would have instinctively not. And then as soon as he got KO'd, I would have thought, oh my god, why didn't I re-roll that? I don't need these re-rolls now. Nothing's going to happen. I'm an idiot. So maybe that's what happened with talk, talk, talk. <laughs> nah, I don't think so, J5. I really don't think so. Because uh, now with the multiple rerolls in one turn, a lot more crazy shit can happen. So stockpiling them for said crazy turns is pretty strong. Uh, multiple rerolls is a, is a bit of a game changer. You should have. Oh my god! Okay, good job he saved the reroll. He realised <laughs> that he couldn't blitz. At least look, at least he solved his at least he solved his thing, right? He obviously should have assisted with the troll slayer and blitzed with the blitzer. And then he's like, oh shit, I'm gonna frenzy trap myself and then not be able to cage properly. I'm an idiot. So then he rectified it by dodging out. So at least he did the right thing eventually. <laughs> at least he at least he fixed his mistake, right? Cost him a reroll, but he fixed his mistake. I, now he's definitely oh okay, now it's not a one day. Yeah, getting surfed is fine. Get surfed and score is absolutely fine, isn't it? Uh, I would take a Chameleon Skink as the potential 12th or 13th player on a Lizardman team. More likely 13th, but whether I'd play Lizards enough to get to a 13th player... Probably not, but um, they're they're better than a normal chameleon skink on a one or a two turn attempt. They're very, very, very niche, very niche, very niche. I mean, they're crap. Ninety nine percent of the time, they're worse than a normal skink. <laughs> Rosa Red Rouse I can't rhyme good afternoon. It's pretty good. Hello Fuzzy Bear. Hello Rob Diesel. Should have called yourself Rob Dees what? <laughs> 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 uh. 
<laughs> yep. So, you know, talk, 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 got his drive done. And uh, he's down to 12, which isn't terrible. If he avoids removals here, he'll have the one turn attempt, right? But otherwise, he might get the other halfling cast. And still an 11 is plotness. See the thing about the thing about rerolls is Johnny Five. <laughs> You've got to think of them like gas in the tank. <laughs> you can either you can either <laughs> you, you can either put your foot down for more power, or you can save them for protection. <laughs> I'm sorry, I need to make that a sound effect. Well, I need to ask him if I can make him a sound effect, then make it a sound effect, because it's brilliant. Oh. Remove one skill from any player in Blood Bowl. I mean, to what, to what aim, Firion? To make it more fun for me, or better for everybody? Make it better for everybody. Maybe swarming on snotlings. That's a fucking good answer, that isn't it? By the way, ten out of ten to Jim. Fucking good answer. Instant. Instant. Correct answer. Four. Um, the other alternative is, of course, dodge on gutter runners, because then that completely fucking wrecks Skaven as well. <laughs> Get fucked. <laughs> oh yeah, Fen from Return. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fen from Imp Knob Lineman. Suck it, Dimmy. Dodge from Amazon, <laughs> Line Women. <laughs> Get out of town. You get shit on Amazons. <laughs> That would be amazing. <laughs> Completely wreck Amazons. Block from dwarves, yeah. Yeah. Oh, so he's failed both Dauntlesses, but it doesn't matter, of course. Gets to take the boat down for a gigantic gang foul if he wants it. Doesn't want the big gang foul. <laughs> Animosity from Hawks. Oh, God. Bonehead from the Croxigore. <laughs> Make lizards great again. Oh, my God. Secret weapon from the Death Roller. Yes. Secret weapon from the Death Roller. Let's go. <laughs> That's the one. That's the one. Secret weapon from Death Roller. Yes, please. That would be the gym fun choice. But uh, swarming from Snotlings is the balance. Got to be the balance choice, hasn't it? Underworld are the kings of Blood Bowl. Give it, letting them have 13 or 14 players in the pitch is mental. So, balance-wise, it's that. So, crucial no removals there means that Talk, Talk, Talk will almost certainly have a fling toss one turn chance at the end of this. Uh, oh yeah, if you could add a skill, you could give right stuff to uh, woody catchers, couldn't you? <laughs> but no, remove it, removing removing swarming from snotlings is a, would be a pretty good pretty good balance change. Yeah, and Snotlings are a bit too good as well, aren't they? So it wouldn't even have to be just Underworld Snotlings. I was really only thinking of Underworld Snotlings. But yeah, you might as well 
Might as well screw normal snot ones as well. <laughs> The problem is min max master, nobody can throw it. <laughs> I guess Morg could, right? If you if you if you had a death roller an induced morgue. Mm. Uh, what about reducing swarming to one or two players? Yeah, I mean that that's something you could do, isn't it? But that's not removing a skill though. Oh man, they'd probably be too strong, honestly. They'd probably make Augers. Well, then Augers are really rubbish win rate, so I probably wouldn't make them too strong, would it? It might just make them too annoying. Does this guy a guard in the middle here? No. So he's going to bring in players here and here to assist. And then leave him on the tree. It is a problem for dwarves, isn't it? How do you deal with the strength six tree on your offense? <laughs> it's not easy. I always think these fairies are the tr are the root thing, but they're not. Are they the roots just uh, around the roots? Obviously. <laughs> But whenever I see them da f dancing around, I think, oh, we, we must be rooted. Nope. Not yet. Uh, 120, I think. I think. I think that's just a normal tree, isn't it? 120. PI. Two players and none for the dwarfs. Oh wow, the kick. <laughs> I've just seen the kick. <laughs> I guess he could blitz he could blitz this guy and try for the scatter, couldn't he? Well then two of them are pretty bad still. That is what he's doing. I guess he has to follow here. In case of one of the, like, you know, the three scatters are bad for him. I guess he had to scatter there. <laughs> oh, should have listened to Jimothy. <laughs> Obviously shouldn't have listened to Jimothy. That was a joke because they're not allowed to watch or listen. But, uh, Wow. Wow, wow, wow. This could be over. This could be flipping over on turn one. Oh, it was three. I didn't even see that, guys. It was three guys out from the pitch invasion. So it's only the pitch invasion that's actually saving Plotinus right now, isn't it? Without that pitch invasion, he'd have been screwed. I don't know why I didn't follow. I guess he didn't want more people on the tree, right? He just wanted to keep two people. Just wanted to keep one person on the tree. Yeah, I'd say I'd say so. I think. Like obviously, it could go to one of these three, which is arguably worse. But at least you could try and get it on that one. And chances are it would come back to your side. I think you've got to go for the pickup, eh? One, two, three, four, five, six, GFI? Or one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI. So either way, it's a GFI. Injured! Doesn't follow, so he's not going for the pickup. Huge injury, actually, isn't it? Blocker. So, does he tag these two? Might be an idea, right? Because the moment they can blitz from here. So yeah, at least at least put the guy who. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that that's 
probably safer, right, to put the guy there so he can't blitz from there. And he could even keep him out here so he can't run around and blitz him. He could have thought about killing the tree, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he should have done. But then he, he only got a push on that, so... Oh! Errata, errata! I mean, the problem with putting this guy there is he can still just scatter the ball, right? You just literally put in the guard, blitz him, scatter it. So, it doesn't do what he thought it did. I think he was doing it to stop the scatter, and it doesn't really stop the scatter. What's this, the thrower? Oh, man. Oh, man. This has still got the potential to be very, 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 very bad. You know, he might not even want to scatter it, right? He might not even want to scatter it. Maybe he went that there. Maybe he put it there to look like he was trying to stop the scatter, but actually hoping he would go for the scatter. Because a lot of the scatters are, are good for the dwarves, aren't they? It's probably 50-50. Does the 3D. That makes scattering it a lot safer, right? Because it's very likely to still be on the tree. It doesn't follow, though. Of course, the last thing, of course, you want is somebody being able to hit your strength six player with stand firm. <laughs> just a joke, just a bit of, just a bit of, just a bit of a laugh there. Chuckles. Well, let's block the uh, Slayer moving around. Maybe the Slayer's going to blitz that Dwarf in front of him. Okay, maybe we are going for the uh, Scatter player here. Oh no, he's not! He's going for the Clearing player. And then maybe going for the Thrower pickup. Could just put another tackle zone on the ball. Goals for the four plus pickup. Fails the seventy five percent, and it goes right in front of the tree. You like four. the uh, you like the gather of football, do me just without the talent. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's a hell of a scatter, isn't it? But I guess he can instantly scatter it with the uh, long beard block up here. That's probably what he's going to do. No safe moves first. Just see what happens with that. I'd imagine is the correct play. Might as well follow and stand on the tree, right? Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, diced, oh, diced. The scatter looks pretty horrible now, but he does get the 2D uh, thrower now. Oh my god, another injury. Oh my goodness, it's look, suddenly looking very good for Plotinus. Apart from he's 1-0 down and the ball's completely about as far away as it can get from him. This is a really weird game, isn't it? Oh, he doesn't get the push! He doesn't get the plim-plom push. He's still got a blitz, so I don't think he'll re-roll it. But, you know, I've seen, I've seen crazier things. Best one to blitz is him, I guess. 
because he can go three and then four square hit him, but then he's in the way. Oh no, he's he's guard. It's this guy guard. Okay, oh, so this guy can just blitz because he's not got guard. You don't really want to put a guard guy on the tree, man. The danger is, of course, if you scatter it, somebody could just catch it. Maybe you want to just run people through here. Like, base these guys up so they can't react. No, Howie Yeti, I haven't seen anything. None of us have. I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen everything. None of us have. So, yeah, I think he'll follow here. I think. Oh, the ball comes out this way. And in between two dwarves. Flip me. And he could go for the runner four plus pick up dodge off, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Actually have the ball in hand. Interesting to see whether he'll go for it or not. Because the ball's relatively safe if he gets it. It's only turn two, so he doesn't have to do it yet. He does do it, but he's allowed the 1D. He's allowed an instant 1D on the ball. And very likely a 2D on the ball. So this is, uh, I'm not sure about the positioning there. I feel like the guarder should have been up here. Like just definitely, right? I, I think you've just got a GFI to get him up here, probably. I mean, this is like super easy to get 2D on the ball. Super easy. But, uh, we shall see. We shall see if he manages to get to do I mean it's pretty like there's a few ways of doing it so you, you try the you try the simple blocks first. I mean you probably stand up your players first. Well one of yeah, two of them I guess. Two of them just stand up. Is this guy down? Yeah. Means you throw us, so you probably don't stand him up. So we make the blockless block first. <laughs> Roll an instant one in nine. And I guess now he's thinking, do I just give up on the drive and wait for overtime? And I think the answer is no, because, you know, this is a really good opportunity. And of course, it's a one in 81 into self removal. So I didn't want to say, you know, before it happened, but, you know, in case you didn't spot it, if you power this guy, you can, he can hit him with two assists, power him. He can hit him with an assist, pow him, and then he can blitz. Uh, sorry, he can go in with guard, and then he can blitz. Or, if it's not a pow, then, you know, you can do other things. Maybe the maybe the uh, tree can come in on a GFI. Maybe he can come around. There's things that could have happened, but uh, not like that. And that could be the game right there, that 1 in 81. Um... Plotness is in a very strong position and has the ball, so you know he can just he can just block and block. He can cut turn the corner here, and this is looking Dunzo for the half. But I don't I don't like this as much. I would have propped this guy up to there, and then after I pow him, he come over and assist this. But it's a catcher, so he didn't need him anyway. But I was still I'd have still done. The, this guy up to here well this guy could have been stood here right or maybe back depending if this guy was stood there and that guy could have got a bit further he could have turned the corner a bit more I feel like he could have gone further downfield as well but I mean he definitely could have only went two he could have gone all the way up here right Runner out to there. But I understand him not wanting to. He doesn't have to do anything right now. In fact, if this guy was stood here, he could have now blitzed the catcher, right, with, with tackle. Which would have been pretty nice. But 
pushing into there is good. That traps him. Should have moved this Slayer ages ago. <laughs> Everything with a three point cage is all right. Are we blitzing with him? I guess the 3D gets the pal. This wasn't great, it wasn't a great blitz, right? Because at the moment he's on tackle and can only four plus dodge away. And now he pushed him there into uh, into like a GFI if the first one's a push. And second of all, uh, you know, he gets and lets him three plus away. So there was a bit of a risky, bit of a greedy risky hit. Whereas if he just moved up here, he's got another player around the ball. Uh, but obviously next turn he's planning on, on completing the pincer movement. Hello, Cyanide Studio. I am indeed, yep. All of the, all of the games getting covered on this uh, on this channel all have been covered all will be covered yep Elliot versus Seabros 20 100 then all the games on Saturday and then on, obviously on Sunday Call Troop versus Necronom and Bo Piff versus Cruz will overlap and honestly Andy Davo versus Lock Raging might overlap with them as well but we'll do one of those live you know even if it's not all the match we'll do some of it live for a bit This match might take till eight. They're not the fastest players in the world. And uh, they've, I mean, look at 143 left plotness of his time bank. That might be an issue. He's probably going to look at, look how much better this was, by the way, if the Slayer was here. Just quietly. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I know, and he's, he's got these and they can connect a bit. So like it's, it's not the end of the world, but it, would have been a little bit better, wouldn't it? And uh, yeah, this might go to late, right? If they <laughs> if they keep going here um, with overtime, it's already been about an hour for just over one half. I mean, it's unlikely to to go too long. But yeah, honestly, Plotness has got to speed up. This is uh, this is too slow, right? Using five minutes of of uh, added on time already. And maybe he can go quicker, like, you know, um, end zone on fumble. Use the time because he had it, but. A little bit dodgy. Probably should have moved these guys. Oof. First, before he did this blitz, but never mind. So he can go all the way to there, can't he? And he can come up to there. So that's a real, real good square for the Garda. Ah, oh, yeah, and he's miles. Oh, so the, the Slayer could go next to him. That's pretty good, isn't it? Have the Slayer there. Yeah. Funny, I preferred I preferred having the Slayer there, and this, well, this is good because this keeps these two controlled, doesn't it? So it's all it's all pros and cons, isn't it? I generally like having guys around my <laughs> guys around my ball carrier. <laughs> 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 well, dwarves around. I like having plenty of dwarves in the vicinity of any possible ball sack. But, um... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was funny. It was really good for Plotinus, apart from the fact he lost the ball, right? Like, he was he was amazing. He got the three stuns from the... the pitch invasion... And he got the early removals, but then the big problem was 
he'd lost the ball, but he managed to get hold of it. And that once he picked it up, I think that was it for the drive, right? And not looking good for the game either. But we do, we are going to have a one turn attempt from talk, talk, talk. And I don't know what he used his re-roll on earlier, but he probably shouldn't have used it. Oh no, it was the one in the 81. Oh, I, I like that re-roll. It was unlucky. It was unlucky, but I, I liked it. I think it was correct. It was such a good good payoff, because if he 2Ds the ball there, you know, either gets the tree on the ball or, or, you know, just knocks the ball loose and stuff, makes it a big scrap again. Like, I feel like... I feel like because it was slipping away from him, he's better off using his re-rolls in normal time to win in normal time. But then, of course, using them on the one turn is also using them in normal time. So, like, I thought it was right to re-roll that block, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe the dwarves should focus on the tree. Is unlikely. Nah, they can't. They just literally can't, right? They need all their players to, uh, to control the... Uh, to control the humans. Basically. You can surf this thrower. That's not bad, is it? That's not bad, surfing the thrower. Should definitely do that. 100%. Well, say it should do that. Should attempt. Should attempt the surf. What he can do is he can move this guy first to here is the correct play, right? Because then it's a safe move. You're covering quad skulls. Nope, this is the wrong square. Completely the wrong square. Because <laughs> now this could be quad skulls and he can 4 3 2 2 hit the ball, right? If he's here, you've already got the assist for this one. And if he's here, you get the push. Then he comes duh, 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 and does it. And you've already got the, the screen. So I like that a lot more. Yep. I mean, it probably doesn't matter. <laughs> probably doesn't matter, right? One, two, three, four, and then and then fifth one there. So it ends up pretty much the same, but. Like they literally end up just reversed, but I just I just thought it was safer there in case of quads. And this, this as well, right? He could have had this guy here, and now it's a three plus to hit the ball. He's now he's got to move this guy over here, up back there, and then this guy over here, and now you know. It, that this guy should have been there, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this guy should have been there. Nice play, Jim. Thank you. He's got to keep him on the catcher, hasn't he? So now some three pluses. Some cheeky desperation moves from the humans, and they might be able to do something. Not humans, Old World Alliance. Uh, yeah, is this going to be a 1D? Oh, oh no. Oh no. I guess you can just dodge with a catcher. But I, I, I like blitzing him on a 1D for the push. Then come through and then let him run loads down. I just chose the dwarves. Yeah, yeah, Steve. Everyone just chose whatever they liked. You know, Inarian didn't have to use the Black Orcs that he'd qualified from the ladder with. Um, right, so he did that blitz to free this guy and then didn't move him. I guess he was going to do the dodge through there at the end. Weird. I don't think so, no. Tag, I thought the tree was great. I thought the tree was great for the first, like, three or four turns. It was pretty decent on, on offense. Was it? No. Could have been better on offense, because he could have fed loads of people to the tree, but he didn't. Um, I quite like the tree. I would still... You know, if I could go back in time and choose Old World Alliance, I would... Well, I mean... 
I would still wouldn't have chosen all the lions, but I like my build had a tree, and I like I liked my build with the tree. In. <laughs> if I could go back in time, I would choose um, Underworld and actually learn how to play them. I can't believe I didn't do it. That's the worst thing that I've done was not not playing Underworld. No, but the, the package was amazing, honestly. The package that Old World Alliance got was amazing. It was amazing. Nah, I wouldn't play Renegades. Renegades didn't get a good package. Old World Alliance got a great package. A win, a team win, and a second. Wow. I mean, I knew they were a good choice. I just didn't. I just haven't practiced with them, PC. That's the thing. I knew they were like. A great choice, the best choice, but I just haven't practiced. So, you know. Yeah. I mean, I know they're a monster team. I just, I just haven't got the experience. But then, yeah, you've won every time you've used them, and Seabros went something like thirteen-one-one in his his first season with them on uh, first time using them on Fumble. So maybe I should have just gone, even without practice, I should have done Underworld, maybe. But the people that I talked to said, uh, said you know, yeah, no, I agree, go Dwarves if you're comfortable with them. But, uh, you know, and Art deliberately didn't go Dwarves because of how absolutely screwed I was versus all the lizard men in the... In the kickoff tournament, which was a f certainly a very fair thing, wasn't it? Very. I mean, there's like this so bad versus lizards. That's the problem with dwarves. Just like the fact that there's an auto lose game. It's pretty rough, isn't it? That's pretty rough for like a tier one team. Wow, this is mental. Does he know there's overtime? The fuck are you doing? Is that the worst play you've ever seen in your life? What the f What the fuck? <laughs> Did he think he was 1-0 up? fuck was that? Well, I'd like to apologise to everybody who's uh, who's just witnessed Plotinus had some kind of aneurysm here. Um, you know, hopes and prayers for Plotinus. Hopefully he gets over whatever the hell's just happened to him. But, uh... What? Inexplicably, I don't know. Poor guy, I mean, that's... Let's, let's all pray for Plotinus. Hashtag pray for Plotinus. That is the worst player that I've seen in this tournament, I think. And I've seen some bad ones. <laughs> I've seen some bad ones. And I think... That is the, if only I could do my... Uh, if only I could do an Owen Hart voice, I would be doing it right now. But, uh... Holy shit. That was horrendous. That was horrendous, man. You don't see anything wrong with that, my god. That's terrible. Like unir unironical, 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 unironically, <laughs> full Artemis. Terrible. It really was. And he's done this lazy ass setup for the one turn anyway. So he wasn't that worried about the one turn, was he? At least try and set up a bit more imaginatively than this.
It was the thrower. It was the thrower. I know it's against the throw team, mate. But look, he could have put blitzers on the LOS. He put one blitzer. He could have put a second blitzer on the LOS. And then had tackle on every square. Things like that. It's just... He could have had another player. He could have had another player and has just chosen not to. It's, that's bizarre. That's got to be one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. <laughs> wow. But, you know, not what I would have done. Who can say if it's good or bad? I'm sure it was great. I'm just not seeing what he saw, etc., etc., etc. Yeah. Could still score the one turn here anyway. Talk, 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 talk. He's going for the non-brawler hit. He could go brawler, right? Rather than a... Uh, this one, oh, so he's given himself. So he can either go block with a re-roll or, like, you know, non-loan. He can either non-loan a block it or he can brawl a block it. I don't know which is better when you consider the, the all the, uh, the entire sequence, right? <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, GFI hand off. Uh, I am investing... Well, this is the thing. I think maybe go for the brawler hit, right? Maybe start with a brawler hit. So that you're more likely to save... But I don't think you're going to win overtime, right? I don't think you're going to win overtime is the problem. So... I think I invest instantly and everything. Instantly and everything. Now, he's only got two left. He used one on a one in nine block that was maybe going to lead to two dice on the ball. So we've got a maximum, uh, maximum, you know, what's it called? Scatter thing, whatever. Right, here we go. Tree throw. Tree throw. Moving straight forward. Right, because there's there's no there's no uh, tackle there. One, two, three, four, five, GFI. There's no need to re-roll it because he's failed pathetically. Must have scattered back like three times or something. Doesn't show you where it's scattered, but uh, <laughs> that is not worth re-rolling. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, GFI, GFI. Who wins the toss in overtime? If the Dwarves win, they win the game, almost certainly. And the talk, talk, talk wins. It's not over. Don't say it's over. He's got nine players versus ten for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I can't believe Plotinus, what happened maybe his like maybe his cat took a hold of his mouse and, and made it gang foul, I, I, who knows who knows what happened to Plotinus maybe he had a bet with somebody that he wouldn't try and throw away the game on turn 15 and he's like who's laughing now I don't even need 5 grand <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he thought he was manager two and not manager one, yeah? Man. Man, that was... That was rotten. That was so rotten. I can't... 
comprehend how bad that was. I can't comprehend anybody defending it either. And I'm not being mean, but it was just really weird. It was just really, really, really terrible. Like, there's no two ways about it, right? He just, he gang fouled the thrower with his, with his block runner. Randomly on turn 15. <laughs> like when he was 1-0 behind as well. Like if he's 1-0 ahead, sure, just do it for fun. Yeah, it was his block runner. Because the other runner had the ball. And he's just he just thought I don't even need a block runner. It's it was crazy, man. You know? Man, I don't know what I don't I just don't understand the logic. I mean what Tag said leverage the man advantage? I mean you leverage the man advantage by keeping 11. <laughs> Having 11 players to stop the one turn. It's only a shoe of hands on the pickup. Like, it's not, it's not a big deal at all. The quick snap. Oh, got to be careful not to lose his turn here. Talk, talk, talk. Very dangerous, very dangerous here. We've all done it. Will he lose his turn to the quick snap? He's got away with it. He's got away with it. <laughs> I was so scared in my kickoff game. <laughs> <laughs> when I got a quick snap, I was like, oh my god, please don't just skip my turn. <laughs> I mean, it might not matter, right? The send-off might not matter. Still, he's still 9 versus 8. Uh, still 10 versus 9, isn't he? And one of them's a halfling. So, it's 10 versus 8 and a half. A blockless block. Again, talk, talk, talks. Ordering an issue. Big issue. Doesn't really care about safe moves first at all. And uh, he may find himself a little bit under pressure now. I feel like I'm turning into Artemis for this game because, you know, they have been lacking fundamentals from Talk Talk Talk. Like, you'd expect more from him, right? He's I think he's won Chalice. He's at least like done well in Chalice. Obviously he's in the you know, the fourth round of the play ins. Um You'd expect like basic covering the ball and stuff to happen before blockless blocks, wouldn't you? Like, you just, and he, he didn't in the first half and he hasn't in the third half. And I mean, look, I did the same versus Glentio, but my, my turn versus Glentio was like a complex turn that I changed my mind halfway through, right? Like, I was thinking, how am I going to get forward here? And I was going to go one way, and then I went the other way. So if I was going one way, I wouldn't have stood the guys up first that I was standing up, right? So, like, my plan changed halfway through the turn, and then I didn't make the safe moves to like to compensate for the plan changing if you like but still a mistake and still completely completely my fault right but that's that's why it happened whereas this is just a, you've received the ball <laughs> you know like it doesn't get any more simple than this you're in the you're in the uh what's it, I, I don't like this i put these two guys on him you know put these two guys on him all three on him these guys aren't really holding any space particularly, are they? They're probably holding less space than putting them on him. He can go one, two, three, four. Like, he can go laterally, right? One, two, three, four, five. He actually gets further around than if they were all three were stood in front of him. And now, as he can come back and cover. So, I think these three probably should have stood in front. Like, he can't just stop the score, can he? Stopping the score only gives him a 50% chance of winning. So he probably should be trying to uh, 
be a bit more aggressive. Hello, Samich. By the way, there was <laughs> I've created more pie in the JFW, so there's, <laughs> there's a bit more competition for you. <laughs> oh, he's blitzing with a blockless blitz. Okay, he gets the power anyway, no problem. Is he going to hand off to the catcher? Is that the idea? Can he potato? No. Surely not. Is he going to cage? Is he going to bring this guy back? And then... And, I mean... I don't understand why he didn't... <laughs> well, who can say sandwich? <laughs> we'll have to ask McNaughton about one of them. <laughs> Only joking, Calcium. Only joking. <laughs> we'll, ask, we'll ask McNaughton about one and Chunter about the other. <laughs> one will have created it and one will have uh, <laughs> searched for it. Oh dear. Ah, diced. So, the halfling is the hit, isn't it? But you can't get him without GFIs. Which is sad. I guess the halfling isn't so scary. Really want to tag the catcher because even even from behind, he's a he's a handoff runaway threat, isn't he? <laughs> I like Martin Septim's death roll of dwarves that were high elves. Oh no! Oh no! This is awful. Just quietly, if he put these three players up here, he would have been able to smash one and then smash another one, and all sorts of good stuff would be happening right now. Doesn't tag the catcher, unless he's going to make two GFIs. No, no, he's already moved full. You could tag him with the runner, but like that's not so good, is it? A bit tricky. These three guys aren't aren't able to do a whole lot. Oh, he tags the ball, base the ball. And actually, the runner coming in here is pretty strong, then, isn't it? Because now it's hard to 2D him. So we could tag there, tag off here, put two on there. Oh, he's got to tag him as well because he would just come in and blitz. Hmm. Actually, though, he might have won. He might have won this game this turn if he put those three in there last turn. He might have won. But he's being safe, and, like, this is fair enough, right? From his point of view here, you know, you're thinking, like, oh, you could you could roll some dice over here or whatever, so you want this guy safe and stuff to, to try and be as safe as possible. But the problem is you do have to turn him over, like, pretty much, right? Stopping the score does not get you the win. It gets you a 50% of the win. But it doesn't get you, it doesn't get you the win. Hello, Shredmeister Flex. This is live. You can tell because it's Plotinus versus Talk 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 and not Manager 1 versus Manager 2. And also you can see the time banks, which you can't. And also it takes forever. Um, <laughs> replays are very quick. Quicker than they were in Blood Bowl 2. But much better controls. It's easy to pause and go backwards and forwards by action. It's funny how frustrating watching replays are, you know, like now with the Aero BB. Doing a few replays, it is surprising, like how uh, how annoying some of the Blood Bowl two replay stuff is. Blood Bowl three replays a lot better. It's it is naff. It is naff style. Yes, it is. Oh, I haven't put the thing on. 
Oh my god, all these games. All these games, I haven't got the play-ins, look. About the last five games I did, didn't have the play-in thing on. Dice. Comedy Mega. So, oh my god, his, his take roots have been terrible. <laughs> he's, like, he's only activated him when absolutely necessary, and he's still rooted three times. <laughs> he must have activated him about four times, and he's failed like three of them. No, maybe he's a bit more than that, like seven times. I, I guess he's, he, he's roughly 50-50. Thanks, Min Max. I do like to laugh at my own jokes, yeah. I'd like... If you don't find your own jokes funny, why are you even saying them? Everyone, everyone shits on people for laughing at their own jokes. But it's like... Of course I do. Of course I do. I wouldn't say it if I didn't want to laugh at it. He's got a few options here, right? You could just bring down the guard, move over screen, block with a ball carrier, blitz this guy with an assist. He could blitz him, but then a push is pretty bad. But then he's got the block as well. He could just stand him up. He's got a lot of choices here. Talk, talk, talk. So he could blitz with a catcher. Lots of... Oh, I mean, he could just blitz with a ball carrier then as well, couldn't he? But then, what if it's a ball down? So lots of options. Well, thank you very much, Min Max Master. Some people hate it. I remember, I remember some asshole on YouTube. <laughs> That laugh was just for him, the prick. YouTube fuckers, Elliot knows. <laughs> Didn't think much. Well, it could have done without the co-host, that was it. Could have done without the co-host. <laughs> Get off my fucking pitch, prick. <laughs> Ooh, I thought he would have moved him in and then 2D'd this guy. Hmm. I guess he can try dodges and stuff, can't he? He does the one day. Oh man, I really liked. I really liked putting him in and two dicing here, right? Then, then it gets you a more advanced catcher. This is like a four plus dodge to hit. One, two, three, four, double GFI. So that's not really very dangerous. Is it one, two, three, four, double GFI. So both of these are four, two, two. And then if you'd gone there, you could eat, if you really cared, you could do this 3 plus dodge to get the corner as well. So, yeah, very lucky there. I really didn't like that. I mean, no, I didn't like it at all. Because if it's skulls, he just hits your cage corner. But then I, I didn't like Plotinus not putting three guys on him the turn before. I think that, that decision to just have those three guys floating around doing nothing is definitely costing Plotinus right now. He's suddenly got three players behind the ball, which is pretty terrible, isn't it? Well, it would be quite good if he had a block runner here, but uh, unfortunately there was just nothing he could do to stop his block runner getting removed. So, you know, just diced really at the end of the day. He's got a, probably got to blitz this blitzer, right? So he can recover the runner. That's how bad it is. Like, he's, he's like losing the game territory right now. Oh my god, he gets the board down. He might have to re-roll this. Yeah, he does re-roll it. Yeah, like, he really is. Like, good, good player from Plotinus, right? He sees, he sees that he's in losing the game territory if he doesn't re-roll that 2D to free up the runner because he's got to get back and he's got to get in front of the ball. Maybe do your safe moves first, but never mind. Maybe he's going to cheer fire with him. Who knows? He's 
got a block here, hasn't he? But then I don't know if he's going to thinking of like geofying to here or just standing up here. So this kind of sucks, right? Because here you've got two on the tree. But then here he can... Oh, it doesn't matter about freeing up the trees. He's, he's rooted, so no, you definitely don't put it on the tree. So you pro so the tree can free him up. So he really wanted a GFI here, right? He really wanted a GFI here. But uh, not worth the risk. Probably similar with this 1D. So ends the turn. Talk, talk, talk. Thinking about a potato. The potato's looking pretty good this turn. It's a pretty good looking potato. He's almost gone. He's almost gone with some dice. Yeah, this is... This is not a lot of dice. Yep, 3D does the job. This is looking like Talk Talk's game. Two rerolls is enough. Don't like this so much. I wanted to bring the Garder over, right? That's his full movement, and then you get more movement out of the Halfling going upfield, but... He's there. He might have to hand off to the catcher this turn, right? So he's, see, this is the thing. The halfling could have been further up. This guy. I, th I thought that's why he did that block first, but he apparently just did it for no reason. <laughs> I thought he was going to come in and assist and then blitz him, leave him on him. I don't like this turn very much. Now it's a blockless block. A blockless block! Another stun. Yeah, I would. I would have wanted. I would have wanted like to, a screen here and hand off to the catcher here or something. Like yeah, you've only got two re rolls and you've got loner on your guys, but um, it's full half. Full half of Gralius. Wow, Tom Schnees. Wow, Tom Schnees. That's... How dare you? Yeah, I think this is too timid, yeah. Well, you see that, Tom. <laughs> but swords can come and go, you know. I wouldn't get too cocky. Just when you least expect it. <laughs> the sword of Elyon could come swinging down on your head. So this is this is this is the problem, right? Be I, like I think both sides have been too timid. I think talk, talk, short, talk should have made a big push up there, and uh, because he hasn't, like you know, I think. But then I also think Plotner's had to be more, you know, aggressive on defense because, look, talk, 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 getting a 50-50 is all right. Like, he's happy about that. Look how many players are out, you know. He's lost two guard blockers and his troll slayers. Like, he's fine getting a 50-50 to win from kicks. You know, not aggressive enough on defense from Plotner's. But, you know, he did lose that uh, runner just to an absolute comedy mega dicing. Uh, nothing he could have done about it whatsoever. Completely out of his hands losing that runner. So, understandable. Hello, Slidey Sofa. Thank you. Yep. I'm quite proud of uh, of myself. There's a, a couple of mods and I had to turn the graphic settings down. <laughs> that, that makes it look better. 
doesn't make a lot of sense, does it? But there you go. And here we go. Talk, talk, talk. The question is now, does talk, 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 talk go for the win or not, right? He's got to weigh up how likely the score is. Holding off the dwarves for another four turns doesn't look too difficult. If he can convince the dwarves, he's trying to score. <laughs> and he can, you know, he can cage around the tree. That makes it very hard for the dwarves to pressure tree side. And uh, he's got a dodge off no tackle here. He's got an assist for there. So I think he should be able to cage around the tree. In fact, just cage around the tree for the rest of the half, maybe even. I don't know, maybe. You can always try and hand off to the catcher and run as well at any point, right? At any point, he's got the handoff to the catcher, so... Yeah, I like that. I like coming up there for that cage corner. I don't like standing there with the ball as much as standing next to the tree. I want to stand next to the tree to make it really hard for him to come in. Oh, he's followed there, I guess. Yeah, he might as well. Catch it there. Does mean that he's got a GFI to hit him. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. We're going for the win. And we're all in on this 8 out of 9 dodge. Flip me. All in on the 8 out of 9 dodge. Yikes. Wait, oh my god, he's just doing an extra dodge? Okay, that's... I hate that. If you're going to do that, do this dodge first. Right? If he's dodging the backside... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If he's if he's covering the backside like this, which he has to be, you do that dodge first. So that if you want to nine it, you still have the halfling on there at least. But now you've abandoned all cover, so now you're just giving up an instant 2D. Oh my god, that was bad. From talk, talk, talk. Gets away with it. Does a rather pointless GFI here. <laughs> Not completely pointless, but he has to re-roll it. Yeah. Like, it does make it... But this is fine. Did he stack two GFIs? No, just one. But this is fine, right? This is fine in being here. If he's here, it's a 4-3-2 or something. And then one, two, three, four, two, four. Like, you know what I mean? Like, there is pretty much just as good. So he really should have just gone to here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I, I just don't think it's much better. One square four. Like, it is better. It is better here than here. But, like, this is good enough. So he just threw away a reroll there. Less than ideal. Halfling's there, so he can't blitz him. So that's that's why you wanted to do that thing. But you've got to make the ball safe first, right? I think you have to. It's tough, isn't it? It's tough. I think you have to blitz the catcher, right? Like it sucks. You've got two. You've only got two rerolls, but and it sucks. You can't make it three dice, and it sucks. You can't aim with tackle. I guess you hit the halfling first with tackle. And then maybe get this guy in front and this guy rotated around. And this guy just back on his feet. You don't want to do that. You want to double GFI, obviously. But maybe you could do that at the end. Double GF. Try a double GFI at the end. Man, really want a GFI tag there. Like that's a real good GFI tag. Real good GFI tag, but he's going for the hits first. Which now he, he's got to make a GFI here. Oh, 
Oh, that's rubbish. That's really rubbish. <laughs> he really wanted to push him back and stick him to the sideline. But that's probably too dangerous to re-roll. He does re-roll it. He gets the pow. Flip me. Alright, nice brave re-roll there. Yeah, Elliot thought he had to. Oh, he ran out of time! He ran out of time! Oh my goodness! He ran out of time. He had to... He had to I said it, didn't I, at the uh, midway through the second half. He had to keep an eye on the time bank. And this guy did not make that GFI that he had to make. This guy did not stand up. He could have double GFI'd. He could have rotated around. It's not unfortunate, is it, JD Whitey? It's not unfortunate. Um, it's it's part of the game is using your time, you know. It's not unfortunate. It's a skill issue. <laughs> it is a skill issue. Yep, it is. It is. Ultimately, it's a skill issue. And and that's got to be a good thing, isn't it? One of the. Uh, <laughs> it's one of the good it's one of the good things about blood ball it's like one of the actual very limited skill issues in blood ball because a lot of blood ball is just rolling the dice and hoping for the best it would be Elliot it would be but you know you've got to keep an eye on it I think that's fine keeping an eye on it oh my god but that GFI was essential wasn't it if he'd just done that Oh my god, he dodges to death. Right. What has he got here? A double GFI. And then a dodge blitz from the runner. Into the slayer. Yeah, I mean, he should have been moving faster the whole game. Like a lot of the game, he knew, he knew what the score was. He's only got himself to blame. Maybe he would have done, yeah. Well, not worse than this, I don't think. <laughs> Elliot, not worse than this, I don't think. Oh, he could blitz with a slayer and run around. One, two, three, four. Nope, he's gone for the hit. Makes the dodge. Gets the pow. Catches the scatter. Surfs the catcher. It's looking very much like kicks, yeah. Two turns, no re-rolls. But he's got he's got he's I mean he's got more chance now, hasn't he, uh Plotinus with the ball and a scoring threat. This is not easy. But talk, talk, talk. He's got like no players left. Uh, Plotness is the two and zero character. Yep. You've never seen kicks. Well, Slidey Sofa. <laughs> I'm afraid I've got some bad news. <laughs> None of us have. <laughs> <laughs> he can throw the halfling. He can throw. He should have followed. He can throw the halfling. Oh my god! He can throw the halfling. Oh my god! Are you ready for the greatest touchdown ever scored in the, in the season two planes? Oh my god! That'd be so good. <laughs> if he if he scores from the halfling toss here like just a one D He is he's throwing he's throwing the halfling now He's just throwing him at the ball Okay well it's an assist isn't it it's an assist for the two D not as exciting as scoring with the halfling, but uh, an assist for the 2D is good. 
<laughs> Into a big fat nothing. Oh man, it's just really tricky for Plotinus as well because obviously he wants to get this up. He can't get this in the scoring range. We could blitz. He could blitz down here and then get him in the scoring range. And then just like block the halfling on 3D, I guess. And try and block this guy and stuff. I don't know. It's really rough, isn't it? It's really rough. He could blitz the thrower, hand off to the runner, and then run down with a runner. Like, do you just blitz here to secure that you don't lose? It's interesting, isn't it, whether you just try to go for not losing, or try for the pretty small chance of a of the turnover thing. This is why I thought he had to be a bit more aggressive earlier. Oh, the blockless block. So it was a bit safer than blocking with a runner here, wasn't it? And maybe he wanted to hand off to the runner. Maybe he wasn't necessarily going for the safer play. He might have been going for the glory play. The question is now, do, we, do you even 2D with the ball? He does and he scores! <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, the guard could have come in here and then he, that would have been a 3D. Oh my goodness. Flip me, guys. <laughs> the halfling is not in range, so it's got to be this guy blitzes, pushes, 4, 3... Four three two. No. Oh wait, no. Okay. So four four three two. That's worse, isn't it? Yeah. Man, he would have failed anyway. Right. <laughs> yeah, he didn't move the he didn't move the blitzer last turn. He can't he can't get this guy into range. Throw her uphill, yeah. And there's the kicks. Um There you go, there you go. Anybody who hasn't seen the kick animations in Blood Bowl 3? Pretty cool, I'm sure you'll agree. <laughs> it, it turns out. And it turns out the dwarves were dancing, so they did win. And, uh. Yeah. It's a tough one, isn't it? I thought Talk Talk Talk's basics were lacking in, in quite a lot of the game. I thought Plotners did get some good dice, obviously, to remove all those. Uh, to remove those. Um, dwarves that he removed, Plotinus's temporary insanity, where he where he fouled with the block runner, was completely inexplicable. I'm shocked, still shocked at that decision. And then in overtime, I thought talk 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 should have probably got made a bigger move to score than he did, and I think Plotinus should have been more aggressive going for the counter score than he was. Um, but obviously, understandable, isn't it? Playoff nerves is actually understandable when there's all of this money potentially on the line. Um, so Plotinus gets through 3-0 and all, on kicks. Talk, talk, talk. Loses for the second time, so can't have too many complaints. So there you go. Uh, commiserations, talk, talk, talk. Congratulations, Plotinus. Thanks for watching, everybody. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And stay fantastic.